Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSA English. In our today's session, we'll learn about one of the important topic, Lake Chad. So we'll see the importance of this lake. So there are two aspects we will cover. How this lake affected by global warming scenario and there is concern with the disturbance due to some extremist group to disturb, disturb the life of people residing nearby this lake. Yes, which means law and order issue we can say. So friends, we'll start today's session. Before that, it's my pleasure to welcome you all on Unacademy, India's largest learning platform, where you will get unlimited access for live and recorded classes along with structured courses. Yes. So we will help you throughout the CSC preparation. It's me. Rishikesh Shinamdar guiding UPSC aspirants from last 8 years. You can follow me on Unacademy and also you can join our telegram group using this link. Yes, Kuber in today's session will learn about Lake Chad. So we'll start session. So friends, Unacademy is providing study material in hard copy that is in the form of 20 books worth rupees 10,000 and now you can grab these books absolutely free with your minimum one year subscription. So you can opt for one year, two year or three year subscription where you will get these books absolutely free and this offer is valid till 20th April. Yes, an academy is providing mega subscription offer where in one year subscription, you will get guaranteed validity till next preliminary examination that is preliminary examination of 2022 and in two year plan, you will get validity till preliminary examination of 2023. So do not forget to use code RBI Live, and this offer is also valid till 20th April. Yes, we are providing iconic subscription and plus subscription. So it's my suggestion to the freshers, which means those aspirants pursuing their graduation or after their 12th examination planning to start preparation for UPSC CSE, they can opt for our iconic subscription. So in this iconic subscription, you will get all the features of our plus courses along with you will get extra features like personal guidance, experts guidelines, study planners and many more. Yes, we are providing paid subscriptions where you will get 10% discount after using referral code RBI Live. Even you can use this referral code to get 10% discount in optional subscription as well. Yes, in combo subscription also you will get 10% discount after using referral code RBI Live. Here you can opt for courses like one year, two year and three year courses. So where in this combo subscription you will get complete general studies and optional subjects. Yes. Those aspirants are facing financial burden or financial obstacles in their preparation so an academy will help you to chase your UPSC dream, which means we will provide the facility of loan for UPSC preparation on our platform. So you can apply for loan through this link. Yes. So friends, don't bother about any financial conditions on academy with you throughout the journey. So we have started this initiative. So hurry up and start your preparation for civil services and achieve your goal. 
yes those aspirants are planning to appear for prelims examination in june they can start with our free test series so an academy is providing free test series to all aspirants just you have to unlock these free tests using referral code rbi life so after using this code you will able to unlock the test where we will cover complete general studies and current affairs part yes these are the new batches started for upsc csc and we are going to start this batches from 21st april so we have one year two year batches ncrd batches and prelims oriented batches as well yes friends do not forget to enroll yourself for an academic combat we are conducting on every sunday morning 11 am yes here also you can enroll yourself using referral code rbi life and now an academic combat is available in hindi medium also so we'll start today's session lake chat so anyone guess where is the locality of this lake yes or can you explain in single one word in which area lake chat is located okay so friends we'll start each and everything related to lake chat in today's session yes so friends if we are talking about recent news regarding this lake chat where india has expressed serious concern over the security situation in the sahel and lake chad region in west africa yes so india also condemned terrorist attack by boko haram in nigeria and lake chad region by islamic state in west africa yes so these are the incidents recently was in news so there are other things which are related to lake chad yes this is situated in west africa see this is the lake chad yes friends so this is the location on map so you can cross check with your atlas as well lake chad yes so lake chad is a historically large shallow endemic lake in central africa which is which has varied in size over the centuries yes the fresh water lake is located in sahelian zone of west central africa so lake chad is mainly in the far west of chad bordering on northeastern nigeria bordering on northeastern nigeria yes this is the location of lake chad so this lake provides water to more than 30 million people yes living in the four countries surrounding it like chad cameroon niger and nigeria yes the central part of the sahel so the importance of this lake chad which is provides water to more than 30 million people in four countries yes the characteristics and features of the lake like it is the largest lake in the chad basin yes the
Chari River, which fed by its tributar tributaries, the Logon, which provides over 90% of lake's water, with a small amount coming from the Yob River in Nigeria and Niger. Yes, so despite high levels of evaporation, the lake is fresh water. Yes, as we know, in Africa, the high levels of evaporation, but the lake Chad is, the lake is fresh water. Yes, now we'll see the significance. So, for years, the lake has been supporting drinking water, irrigation, fishing, livestock and economic activity for over 30 million people in the region and it is vital to indigenous pastoral and farming communities in one of the world's poorest countries. So however, the climate change has fueled a massive environmental and humanitarian crisis. Yes. So the United Nations has termed the Lake Chad crisis as one of the worst in the world. Yes, along with it. Impact of global warming, the significance of lake. Yes, and disturbed area due to terrorist activities. So, a looming peril is that lake has shrunk 90% over the last 60 years. Yes, the effect of global warming, the lake has shrunk 90% over the last 60 years since the chronic drought surged at the beginning of the 1970s. Yes, the surface area of the lake was 26,000 square kilometers in 1963. Now it has now reduced to less than 1,500 square kilometers. Yes, its population is exploding and the region has been ripped apart from conflict at unprecedented scale. Yes. If we'll see the surface area of the lake was in 1963 was 26,000 square kilometers whereas now it's shrunk 90% and currently it's less than 1,500 square kilometers. Yes. So, just have a documentary by United Nations Yes, so the Lake Chad Basin, which is an area of potential which is facing multiple challenges. We'll see all those challenges one by one. Yes, so the Lake Chad Basin is an important source of fresh water that supports more than 45 million people which located at the crossroads of Cameroon, Chad, the Central African Republic, Niger and Nigeria. Yes, this lake, it has been great potential in terms of biodiversity and natural and cultural heritage. Yes, it is inscribed on the World Heritage tentative list of Cameroon, Chad, 
Niger and Nigeria. It also hosts two world heritage sites like lakes of Onyanga, Oninga and Manovo Gonda. Yes, a biosphere reserve, Waza and Ramsar site of wetlands of international importance, which including the Cameroonian, Chadian, Nigerian and Nigerian and Nigerian parts of Lake Chad and the rivers of the Central African Republic. Yes, so it holds the Chad Basin holds two World Heritage, Heritage Sites. Now, between 1960 and 1985, the surface area of Lake Chad was reduced by 90 to 95 percent. Yes, 90 to 95 percent due to decrease in rainfall. Yes, which led to significant imbalances in ecosystem. And however, since the 2000s, it has been expanding. Yes. So, the area is also plagued by conflicts exacerbated in recent years by the insecurity generated by the Boko Haram sect, which led to significant population migrations. Yes, along with global warming concerns. The area is affected by conflicts. So, if we are talking about the challenges like poverty reduction, biodiversity conservation, ecosystem management and rehabilitation. Yes, participatory planning and inclusive governance, science-based decision making, it will help to overcome these challenges. Yes. So, who is Boko Haram? So, Nigeria's militant Islamist group, Boko Haram, which has caused havoc in Africa's most populous country through a wave of bombings, assassinations and abductions is fighting to overthrow the government and create an Islamic state. Yes, the Boko Haram promotes a version of Islam which makes it haram or forbidden for Muslims to take part in any political or social activity associated with Western society. This includes voting in elections, wearing shirts and trousers or receiving a secular education. So, the Boko Haram regards the Nigerian state as being run by non-believers regardless of whether the president is Muslim or not and it has extended its military campaign by targeting neighboring states. Yes, the this Boko Haram was militant group yes has attacked many schools in northern Nigeria yes this militant group launched its insurgency in 2009 yes so this terrorist group or militant group founded in 2002 where official Arabic name Jamatu Ahli Sunnah Lidawati Wal Jihad means people committed to the propagation of prophets teaching and jihad. So initially focused on opposing Western education. The group launched military operations in 2009 to create Islamic State. Yes, designated a terrorist group by United States in 2013 and declared a caliphate in areas it controlled in 2014. 
So most territory now recaptured by army. Yes. So we'll see the details in this area of Chad Lake. So around 17 million people live in areas affected by violence, which resulting from the conflict between non-state armed groups and military forces in the Lake Chad region. Yes. So this Lake Chad region was affected by violence resulting from the conflict between non-state armed groups and military forces. So the conflict between military forces and non-state armed groups in the Lake Chad region broke out in Northeast Nigeria in 2009. Yes, it has since spread into neighboring Cameroon Chad and Niger, creating one of the largest humanitarian crises in Africa. Yes, many of the displaced have found refuge in host communities, putting a huge strain on a region already suffering from poverty, food insecurity, recurrent deaths, outbreaks and weak health systems. Yes. So, in 2014, after several years of violence in Northeast Nigeria, the conflict between military forces and non-state armed groups in the region expanded into the far north region of Cameroon, Western Chad, and Southeast Niger. So far, the states involved have been focused on security and strategy of military containment to fight against the armed groups. Yes, they have barely addressed the humanitarian consequences of the crisis. And although the armed conflict across the region has had direct consequences on people subjected to indiscriminate violence at the hands of warring parties and forced displacement. Yes. food production and distribution has been seriously disrupted and people's health and living conditions affected where psychological trauma is widespread in the locality. Yes. Now after this incidence, if we'll say or if we'll see the today's situation. So the violence has displaced an estimated 2.5 million people across the region. Yes, the conflict continues in Borno, Admawa and Yob states in Nigeria. Yes, this violence has displaced an estimated 2.5 million people across the region. The conflict continues in Borno, Admawa and York states in Nigeria and in Niger, Chad and Cameroon. Yes. Yes, Sejil. In today's session, we'll learn about Lake Chad and the region. which was in news due to global warming and crisis as well, violence crisis, yes. So, thousands of civilians have been subjected to violence, abuse and violations. So, the United Nations Refugee Agency, yes, UNHCR, which reports that as of 31st August 2020, 2,99,340 Nigerian refugees are living in Chad, Cameroon and Niger. So, according to the armed conflict location, 
and event data project SELED, which more than 37,500 people were killed in the conflict in the Lake Chad Basin between May 2011 to 31st July 2020. Yes, this is the huge number. So people were killed in the conflict. So some 17 million people across the region are facing a complex crisis driven by extreme poverty, climate change and conflict. Yes, more than 10 million people need life-saving protection and humanitarian help. But the provision of aid is hindered by security and access issues. Yes. In Nigeria's Borno state, some camps for displaced people still lack basics such as food, clean drinking water, shelter and sanitation. People's needs are particularly acute in isolated enclaves outside the state capital, Madugri in Nigeria. Yes, if we are talking about the rainy season which brings further complications with the rise in malaria and other epidemics such as cholera, hepatitis E. So the provision of humanitarian aid in remote locations is hampered by the waterlogged roads. Yes, the people from across Bono state and refugees from neighboring Cameroon continue to arrive not always by choice, in towns controlled by the military. So they have limited freedom to move outside these areas and are dependent on humanitarian assistance to survive. Yes, in some areas, people have been stranded for over two years with little prospect of returning home. So in Cameroon, Chad and Niger, the ongoing presence of armed groups threatens their livelihoods of both the local populations and people displaced in the area. So, the majority of displaced people have found refuge in communities already facing challenges, putting more pressure on scarier local resources and overstretched infrastructure. Yes, due to the ongoing insecurity, families are frequently forced to look for new places to live, making them even more dependent on humanitarian assistance. Yes. So, in Niger, more than 60% of the displaced and refugee populations living in, yes, in and around Difa have settled in informal sites where living conditions are harsh and where the needs for proper shelter, clean water, food, sanitation and healthcare are insufficiently made. So ban on various economies, economic activities and restrictions on people's movement further hamper the ability of locals, displaced people and refugees to be self-sufficient. Yes, in Cameroon, the security situations remain very volatile. The far north region of Cameroon is frequently affected by attacks and suicide bombings. We have scaled up our emergency surgical activities in response. Yes, so the United Nations Peacekeeping Mission is helping local administration to spread peace in the locality. So, in the area bordering Nigeria, health facilities lack staff, health facilities lack staff and medical su supplies, and many have been abandoned altogether. 
Yes, Chad's Lake region, one of the poorest areas in the country, hosts thousands of Nigerian refugees and internally displaced people. Yes, after a peak in 2015 and 2016, the humanitarian emergency is slowly receding and relative calm has been restored. So, security incidents and attacks. So, in International NGO Safety Organization recorded 896 incidents in the Lake Chad Basin. Yes, in the Lake Chad Basin region between January and April 2019, which including kidnappings, attacks, roadblocks, and bombings. So, in January 2019, for example, Several thousand people fled, ran Nigeria, and following a violent attack on the town, and sought safety over the border in the Bojo and Cameroon. Yes, so armed group have directly targeted health workers. Yes, so the UN have had to scale back our outreach activities at times to protect our colleagues and patients. So, for example, in 2018 in Nigeria, where the authorities had to suspend medical activities following attacks in Bono State, and in August 2019, a violent attack in Niger's Bifa region, which interrupted their health work. Yes. So, the security situation also increases the risk for people traveling to see medical support. So how this area is disturbed by these activities? Yes. Also facing like food insecurity, malnutrition and malaria. Yes. So rising insecurity and climatic variabilities have led to a spike in the number of people facing food insecurity and malnutrition in the Lake Chad Basin. So according to OCHA by 27th April 2020, 3.6 million people were food insecure, 2.89 million of them in Nigeria alone. Yes, the region is also badly affected by malaria the World Health Organization's 2019 World Malaria Report lists Cameroon, Niger and Nigeria among 13 countries worst affected by malaria in the world. So Nigeria tops the list according for the 25% of seizures worldwide due to malaria. Yes, food security and chronic malnutrition are aggravated during the Lean season between harvests, yes, from June to September or October, and this occurs at the same time as the rainy season when rates of malaria dramatically increase. So each year, MSF sees many patients suffering from a combination of malaria and acute malnutrition. So, the UN conducting malaria prevention activities in the Lake Chad region, Lake Chad region, including seasonal malaria, chemo prevention. Yes, if we are talking about COVID-19, yes, in that region, so COVID-19 spreading across the Lake Chad basin and the major risk of COVID-19 in Africa will probably not be the virus itself, but its indirect consequences such as deprioritization of responses to malaria, diarrhea, respiratory infections and malnutrition, as well as other diseases and medical conditions. Yes. Since the beginning of COVID-19 outbreak, the authorities of United Nations and local administration 
have been concerned about its effect on routine vaccination activities and campaigns because of restrictions on movements and gatherings and a lack of protective equipment. Yes, misinformation about the virus has led communities to fear becoming infected as a result of visiting health centers. Yes, Ram Kumar, in today's session, we are studying Lake Chad in details with the aspects of affected by global warming and violence crisis as well. Yes, so COVID-19 response in the Lake Chad Basin region. So, the agencies have adopted ongoing projects while supporting national responses to COVID-19 and in place where the needs are the greatest, they have opened or contributed the creation of COVID-19 treatment centers. So, they are also supporting many existing health facilities by helping them to recruit and train medical staff, establish isolation units and triage systems and strengthen hygiene and prevention measures. So in facilities in Niagara, Chad and Cambrook, we have installed oxygen generators to help treat several cases. Yes. So this is outbreaks. So where outbreaks of disease are major concern as sites are overcrowded, shelters are inadequate and the water and sanitization infrastructure is insufficient for the large numbers of people living in the sites. Yes. So the onset the rainy season poses higher risk of outbreaks such as cholera and malaria. So the cholera is endemic in the region, especially in the Lake Chad Basin, where poverty and displacements of people due to insecurity was in the situation. And in such context, a multi-faceted approach is a key to prevent and control any outbreak at a local and regional level, including in particular epidemiology. Yes. So in 2019, they continue to respond to an ongoing cholera outbreak in the north and far north regions of Cameroon. Yes. So after that, in addition to these activities, they supported the response to a messless outbreak in Marua, where they treated more than 1,300 patient, patients in outpatient consultations. Nearly 407 cases were admitted to the treatment center at Dugoy and the water and sanitation infrastructure, which must be strengthened in order to increase access to safe drinking water to prevent spread of waterborne deaths. Yes, this includes the construction of waste management sites, the construction or rehabilitation of latrines and the chlorination of water points. Yes, now if we will see behind all crises, the ever-changing climate change has dramatically, dramatically worsened the situation which amplifying food and nutritional insecurity in the region. Temperature is rising one and a half times faster than the global average. The seasonal and inter-rainfall patterns have been drastically changing each year. Yes, after this human-made crisis like violations and attacks or militant groups activities, there are 
other aspect of global warming that is climate change has dramatically worsened the situation in the area yes this is triggered food insecurity ultimately pushing communities into arms of the terrorist groups yes so the boko haram is one of the top insurgent groups with strong foothold in the region yes see with the changing climate has dramatically worsened the situation which amplifying food and nutrition insecurity in the region yes yes this pictorial image is talked about a lot of situation and affected area locality yes now we'll discuss lake chad can the vanishing lake be saved yes due to global warming effects The Lake Chad, a source of water to million people in West Africa, has shrunk by nine tenth due to climate change. Yes. So population growth and irrigation. So, can a scheme dating back to the nineteen eighties save it? Yes, we'll discuss how it will. worked yes so it's a ridiculous plan and it will be never happen that's the reaction many people have to the idea of trying to fill up the lake chad and restore it to its former ocean like glory by diverting water from the Congo River system, yes, which is two thousand four hundred kilometer away. Yes. So, skeptics in Nigeria who have seen successive governments fail even to make the lights work, wonder if the region's politicians have nodded off and have been dreaming a little too hard. But the government ministers and engineers who were recently sipping mineral water in the capital abuja the international conference on lake chad had good reason to be thinking outside the box yes see the maps it's showing the images are showing them how this lake shrunk from 1973 to 2070 yes See, this is complete Lake Chad. In 1973, whereas in 2017, which is up, which is shrink to this much. Yes.
So, this is the effect of global warming and human activities in the area. So, the Lake Chad has shrunk by 90%, 90 to 95% since 1960s due to climate change and increase in the population, unplanned irrigation. Yes, its basin covers parts of four countries like Nigeria, Niger, Chad and Cameroon. So, and has been water source for between 20 million and 30 million people. Yes, it's like maximum 45 million people. So, but with the desert encroaching, for the every year, it is getting increasingly difficult for families to make live, living through agriculture, fishing and livestock farming. So, the United Nations says 10.7 million people in the Lake Chad Basin need humanitarian relief, humanitarian relief to survive. Yes, situation worsened. day by day in the region. So, UNESCO and Lake Chad Basin Commission signed partnership agreement in May 2017 for three years to implement a project which entitled Biosphere and Heritage of Lake Chad. So, the project includes the wide range of activities from setting up an early warning systems for droughts and floods to restoring degraded ecosystems such as spawning grounds, spirulina and the cowrie cow. Yes, an endemic species that plays an important role in social cohesion. So particular attention is also paid to income generating activities through the promotion of green economy and valorization of the basis natural resources. Yes. So the project also focuses on accompanying member states in the preparation of dozer for the creation of transboundary biosphere reserve in the basin and nomination of lake as a world heritage site. Yes, the project also focuses on accompanying member states in the preparation of dozer for the creation of transboundary biosphere reserve. Yes, in the Chad basin and nomination for the lake as a world heritage site. So this involves updating and improving knowledge of Lake Chad's natural resources and building capacity for the management and protection of these resources by managers, states and training and conservation technical institutions. Yes. So the trans boundary dimension of the lake, Chad Basin provides an opportunity for sub-regional cooperation and integration that the Biopult project yes will underpin to promote peace, safeguard and enhance natural and cultural resources in order to improve local communities, sources of income and thus contribute to poverty reduction. Yes. The project is implemented in partnership with the Lake Chad Basin Commission and funded by the African Development Bank. Yes. The Biopal project with the partnership between The Lake Chad Basin Commission Act, funded by the African Development Bank. Yes. 
So this is all about the Lake Chad, their challenges in the locality with the context of global warming and militant group activities and violence yes so that's it about today's session yes friends so in today's session we have covered Lake Chad yes why this lake was in news like our country has expressed serious concern over the security situation in the Lake Chad region in the West Africa yes and we also condemn terrorist attack by Boko Haram in Nigeria and Lake Chad region and by Islamic State in West Africa. Yes, the location of Lake Chad, surrounded by the country Chad, Niger, Nigeria, and Cameroon. Yes, so this is the Lake Chad is historically large shallow endoric lake. This is the freshwater lake which is located in the salient zone of West Central Africa. Yes, largest lake in the Chad Basin. Basin. Yes, this is the lake is the lake is fresh water yes significance so the lake has been supporting drinking water irrigation fishing livestock and economic activity for over 30 million people in the region yes the climate change has Fuel the massive environmental and humanitarian crisis in the region. Yes. Then we have covered the multiple challenges in the Lake Chad Basin. Yes. Then we have covered the situation in recent times. Yes. So of security incidents and attacks in the Lake Chad Basin region by militant groups yes food security malnutrition and malaria then we have covered COVID-19 situation in the region yes so 
the ever changing climate has dramatically worsened the situation which amplifying food and nutritional insecurity in the region the temperature is rising one and a half times faster than the global average yes the seasonal and inter rainfall patterns have been drastically changing each year which affect the biodiversity in the region yes this lake chad region has triggered food insecurity and ultimately pushing communities into the arms of terrorist groups yes then we have covered the activities for saving lake chad region yes we have covered how the lake chad shrunk by 90 to 95% from 1973 to recent years then we have covered the project by unesco and the lake chad basin commission and also we have covered the biopult project yes so friends keep revising keep studying what we have covered the topics in related with the lake chad so it will help you in the preliminary and main examination so friends see in the next lecture with new topic till the time keep revising keep studying do not forget to join our telegram group using this link yes you can use referral code rbi life to get 10% discount in our paid courses yes friends please like share and subscribe an academy videos yes those aspirants now are planning to appear for prelims this year in the month of june do not they do not forget to enroll themselves yes so they can enroll for our free test series yes in this free test series we will cover your complete general studies and current affairs part and also we are conducting an academic combat on every sunday morning 11 am yes friends and also do not forget to enroll yourself for a minimum one year subscription to get 20 books complimentary with your course and also you can opt subscription through mega subscription offer in which you will get validity like for one year plan you will get validity till next preliminary examination 2022 and in two year plan you will get validity till plims 2023 yes as we have discussed about iconic subscription which will boost your preparation during your graduation yes so friends an academy will help you throughout the preparation with various initiatives 
and in which one of the important initiative by an academy for the aspirants those are facing challenges for example financial obstacles in their preparation so an academy is providing loan for upsc aspirants yes loan for upsc preparation so this is the link you can use this link to apply for loan so chase your upsc dream with an academy india's largest learning platform where we will help you to achieve your target yes so friends that's it for today's session see you in the next class with new topic yes please take care yourself thank you all the best